I want to challenge you on something that you said um, sure. about the one week iteration uh, in terms of your preference for it. Mm-hmm. Do you think that teams that work in these short iteration cycles, um, are they, do they have challenges in terms of uh, not having time to innovate or not having time to take up items in their retrospective because everybody's just so busy trying to deliver, deliver <laughs> and meet these metrics. And, you know, so that's my uh, thinking about right. maybe a longer iteration does make sense so that you can right. be able to do those things. So um, I don't have any data about this. I can't, I can't tell you logically one, like, sorry, I can't tell you with studies or anything like that. But um, what I can say about it is that um, every team does need to create space for innovation. And so at the very, very least, the way that a team does its sprint review and retrospective should include opportunities to think about innovation. That could be product innovation, it could be process innovation, it could be tool sets like techniques, a- anything really. And, and that's, that's kind of part of what continuous improvement is all about. Um, one of the things that uh, like when we talk about innovation, a lot of us don't know exactly what that means though. And, and so I also want to be very clear that continuous improvement is not necessarily innovation. Okay. Innovation is about coming up with truly new ideas. They could be small, they could be big, doesn't matter, Mm -hmm. but things that um, your organization Um, would find new is kind of innovative. But what's really, when we talk about innovation, what we really mean is innovative for the marketplace. So so there's a difference between continuous improvement and innovation because oftentimes what a team will do is they'll, they'll come up with some idea for how to improve things. But actually it's something that's been done a million times in other teams. So it's not innovation, it's not truly new. And so I just, I wanna clarify that because I, I'm a little sensitive about the word innovation, okay? okay? Mm-hmm. But, but if you're talking about continuous improvement in general, then your scrum master should be creating an environment in your team where it doesn't matter what the length of your sprint is, what matters is that the environment includes space for thinking about how to improve. Um, uh, so, you know, I, I'm trying to think of some really simple example. Um, well, okay, so it, it, we're talking about one week sprints. And so everyone's feeling really busy in a, in a one week sprint. You're right. Absolutely. It does feel very busy. Mm-hmm. And so the, the thing to do with, with that then is in the, in the retrospective for the scrum master to ask the question, how can we maintain our one week sprints, but feel less busy, feel less frantic? And of course there's an obvious answer, which is take less work, but, <laughs> but that's not always feasible, right? Like you might have deadlines or whatever, so you can't always do that. Right. Um, but, but to bring the question to the team, like this is, this is such an important principle of the retrospective is that the retrospective is a critical space for continuous improvement, which might also mean innovation. Doesn't always, but it might also mean innovation. Likewise, in the sprint review, when you have stakeholders looking at your product, it's not only about feedback in terms of this is good, this is bad or whatever. It's also about thinking about the future. So so your your sprint review meetings should also have some space to ask your stakeholders, hey, what's next? How can we make this better in the future? Short-term, long-term, is there anything that you see in the marketplace or in other industries or you know, just a dream that you have, (laughs) right? And you don't you don't do everything but at least you have that space for innovation built into both your sprint review and your retrospective. 
How, um, so just picking back off of that, um, how involved should the development team be in terms of uh, bringing ideas into the product? And because I know with a lot of other development teams, they're not really involved in that because nobody really wants to hear their thoughts on it. And I, I, I don't really, you know, I, I think that everyone has some kind of say about the product because they have a touch point, you know, and they, mm. uh, they're intimate with it. So, but yeah. I, I, all these ideas are coming top down and, you know, I don't know if we're sure. giving um, the dev team enough deference. Right. Yeah. So, okay. There's, there's two things here. So number one is that absolutely the, the development team should be free to do technical innovation. They, they, okay. We, we have some guidelines on this, but like if the product backlog has business problems to solve, then the team is clearly responsible for technical solutions, which include innovation. And the development team shouldn't need to ask permission to do that. So another way of saying this is that like a team shouldn't have to put technical ideas on the product backlog. It's just their responsibility to, to be excellent, right? Like you hire them, you pay them a lot of money and, and they should just be excellent in the best way that they know how at any given time. Right. But of course, sometimes technical innovations have an impact on the customer and users. Okay, so, so absolutely if that's the case, then the product owner needs to get involved. The, the, the things need to be on the product backlog um, if it impacts customers and users. Um, so, and <laughs> of course, you know, your, your development team, they're smart people. They're gonna have ideas about the product, about the marketplace, about the business, about the users, about the customers, about, you know, like your sales team, your marketing team, whatever. Like they're gonna have those ideas and absolutely they can contribute those ideas. Mm -hmm. Why okay. wouldn't, why wouldn't you listen to them? Right? Like <laughs> they, yeah, they're not <laughs> we're creating the space for it. I, I mean, I think we love to listen. I want to listen, but it doesn't seem like there's enough time in the day. We're just, again, you know, right. like you said, creating that space for yeah, exactly uh, right for improvement. Yeah. So, so does your team participate in the sprint review meetings? They do. Okay, so that's good. So then sometimes it's it's just a matter of giving people permission. You know, like if, if, if no one has ever told them, hey team, if you have ideas, we want to hear them. So, you know, I, I'm working with an offshore team right now. And one of the challenges that um, the Scrum Master and I have is to, just to get the team talking and, uh, you know, warming up and even understanding them on a personal level. So uh, I, I did some kind of silly things like asking questions in the chat, like, what's your, you know, favorite movie or things like that? And uh, it's crickets. And it's like, how, how do we get people to be more engaged in the team and that they're not feeling like they're just a hired hand, you know, to fulfill these, these tasks. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. That, that's, a, that's a bit uh, tangential, but it just made me think of it. Well, you know, um, so, so I, I just met a guy um, virtually, his, his name is Duncan Wardle and um, he's got a website. I'm putting it in the zoom chat there. Um, he's, he's a guy who worked at Disney for many, many years. And he is specifically about creativity and innovation. And um one of the things um, he has is these kind of like really simple little exercises that can help break the ice for okay. creativity. Um, uh, and, and they take like a minute or two minutes max. And so sometimes if you want to start a meeting in a way that might get people a little bit more engaged, yeah. you know, you, you can try these, you can try these exercises. Um, and, uh, <laughs> you know, they're, they're really like, there's so many other people who, who have this kind of stuff, but 
you know, part of creating space is not just giving the time for it, but also helping people with the mindset. And so you're working with this offshore team. They might be shy. They might be concerned about authority or they might be worried about taking risks. Um, and so of course it's gonna take time for them to warm up just in general. Um, but there are techniques as well to help with that. And, and that's something that you can, and you should ask your scrum master to investigate, right? Like what are some techniques that can help our team engage more effectively in these meetings? And there's tons of them. There's hundreds, thousands. <laughs> yeah, and, and that, that's um, sort of my concern is doing this on my own as the product owner when um, you know, a lot of that needs to originate from the scrum master. And uh, I think I need to have a conversation with him on, you know, how we can, how we can like bring people into the, the conversation more because yeah. I don't want them to feel like, yeah, I want them to feel invested and uh, build right. trust with them. Right. Right. Has your scrum master come to our scrum training? And he's, uh, I don't know, he's based in India. Um, I don't know his background. And this is part of the problem. I don't know okay. the backgrounds of a lot of my team members and we're not right. on video either. So oh. I don't see their, I've, I haven't seen most of their faces. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So build I, some relationships then. You, yeah. put, put some time and effort into that. Build some relationships. Maybe start with your scrum master. Um, but yeah, see if you can spend some time on video. Even 15 minutes can make a big difference um, in terms of creating a good relationship. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be invasive, like, hey, can you turn your camera on? Because I don't know culturally, like, if that Ooh. works or not, or... Okay. Well, so I'm, that... I'm... Okay, so I'm kind of a jerk. <laughs> and I would just say, hey, dude, turn your camera on. I want to get to know you better. <laughs> <laughs> nice and direct. Yeah. I, like that. <laughs> I, I give you permission to try that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I will try it and uh, let you know how that goes. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> so, Michigan, I think um, in terms of just going back to our original topic, um, I think the takeaway in terms of the the like sprint iteration is that it really doesn't matter. Um, it is what's working for the team. What I'm trying to look at is, you know, are we me using meetings effectively? Why does yeah. it feel like I'm having too many meetings, right? Yeah. Um, and um, that's the shorter iteration puts good pressure on the team. Yeah. And um, if I want room to have innovation or improvements then, we should create space for that. It's not necessarily, yeah. necessarily you know, changing the iteration. Exactly, time. exactly, okay. yeah. Okay. That was an amazing summary, Lynn, thank you. <laughs> 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 you said much more quickly. I, I could have said it in exactly those words. And no, no, <laughs> I, I think it was expensive, the expense of you. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Um, anything else I can help you with? Well, I mean, I'm sure I'm going to reach out to you because I'm yeah. five weeks into this new role. And okay. a lot of it is still kind of walking on eggshells. Not not like, I don't want to be overtly like changing things. I want to kind of fill things out. But, um, you know, I might touch base with you again and um, try a couple of techniques that I can change. I don't think changing the iteration is in, you know, it's not possible. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. not, not, you know, I, I need to have a couple more wins underneath my belt sure. to be able to present that to leadership, but yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll see how the next couple of weeks go and Good. I'll incorporate some of these ideas that you gave me and yeah, especially absolutely. turning the camera on. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you so much, Lynn. And yeah, feel free to reach out anytime. Um, I'm, I'm really happy to help and uh, yeah, good luck. Yeah. Thank you so much. I appreciate your guidance as always. All right. <laughs> Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.